This is how the world's most expensive perfume material sounds like. An ancient perfume material slowly has become a global standard. From the most luxurious perfume houses in the West to the most luxurious perfume makers in the Middle East. Everyone loves the smell of oud. Agarwood has a very significant cultural association with people in the Middle East, India and countries in the Far East, China and Japan. They have dedicated schools to burning agarwood, enjoying the process of incense. So guys, first we need to understand two very broad categories of agarwood. Now this is very very essential in understanding the different types of woods guys. So I would like you to pay attention. Now let's start with plantation wood. Now plantation wood is basically something which is grown artificially. It is not found in the wild. It is nice smelling but it does not have the magic of old wild wood which is found in the wild by accident. However, plantations are artificially cultivated agarwood trees and uh, they have come up in India long back, 40-50 years back in Southeast Asia. There is a rampant uh, growth of plantation agarwood uh, all over. So guys, let me show you the basic differences between how these would look like and there are some confusing uh, pieces in here as well. So this is how a standard plantation wood piece should look like. If you see closely, this has got good amount of resin on it all right but you see the piece is not completely dark colored it has a lot of white patches which suggests that this wood does not have a really deeper infection all right the areas where the wood becomes dark is suggestive of resination which is the natural agarwood formation and it may form due to physical damage uh, uh, you know an insect burrowing the wood and causing an uh, infection inside, fungal molds can come up which can lead to agarwood formation. So everything that, ca that causes, that can potentially cause damage to the trees uh, will eventually lead to agarwood formation and this is only found in about 8 percent of the total number of trees in a particular area. So it is a very, very small amount that we are talking here. So this is how an artificially cultivated inoculated piece of agarwood looks like. It is light, it is very very thin all right, like wafers of chips, uh, potato chips something like that. But when you take up a wild piece it will have a typical appearance like this. Now this is a very special um, sort of piece which is almost like moderate grade, it is not too expensive, not too on the higher scale. You can see this is a more solid piece, it has proper resonation on the outside and if you cut this piece through and through you will see some resonated parts in here. Now let me show you something which can confuse you. Have a look at this piece, this is even darker, it appears even heavier but when you touch this piece you will find some dust, almost rust like material coming onto your hands. This is plantation wood. All right. Usually what they do in the jungles is put iron nails into these trees and these trees are forcefully inoculated uh, with some organic material at times as well or just leaving the nails there causes uh, physical trauma to the trees leading to agarwood formation. So this is this appears awesome, this uh, looks awesome all right and it, it, it also sinks this is a very heavy piece so it may confuse a new buyer into thinking that this is a wild agarwood piece but it is not. You can see the hollow points where they have put nails and you get that rusty material onto your hands and it does not smell too good as well. Most of these wild chips usually of a high grade quality will carry uh, a very soft uh, barney, sweetish, uh, sourish sort of smell which is very, very reminiscent of uh, putting a chip on the burner. And uh, with the most higher grade woods, the smell even the smell becomes even stronger. So this is a basic difference. Now let me show you a very basic plantation wood chip. All right, on the outside it looks fantastic. 
you can see the resin patterns and see this wood is almost hollow and has a whitish part on the opposite side all right these smell good as well and these are quite affordable as compared to these ones so if someone is looking for um, wool at an affordable price these could be their go to but guys it does not give you the ultimate pleasure the spiritual pleasure that these wild agarwood pieces possess so these are especially for people who are on a budget or people who are just entering into the world of ooths because this thing gets more and more complicated with experience so guys these are typical gyrinops woods gyrinops agarwood species which are basically found in the coastal regions and there's something which i found uh, of particular interest most of these chips have a lot of fiber content so this is very hard wood this is a very hard piece of wood and it's got it's it's a proper solid piece you you find the resonation and you find these thick fibers at the bottom all right this is very typical with coastal wood you can see some fibers here as well now uh, this is sri lankan gyrinops from the island of sri lanka and you can see the similar sort of fibers in here lot of fibers then you have some uh, moss formation up here and you've got resin embedded in between I I need all of you to focus on this piece of wood that I have and uh, you can see it's it's a whitish looking piece but it's it's one of the most beautiful pieces that you can imagine but there's a lot of dirt added here at the bottom you know which I can easily take out now the oud market is full of you know cheats because it's a huge market it's 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 a very expensive market very expensive commodity so everyone tries to fool you sometimes they glue chips to larger pieces of wood which have a very bad a very horrifying plasticky sort of smell when you put it on heater because of that fevi that fevi call that fevi quick sort of fevi bond sort of smell comes out and it just chokes you out and then you get a lot of these pieces filled with mud so that the weight of this is increased and uh, you get a much higher price for this piece confusing any new buyer so you always must look for these signs looking at a huge batch of course if you are buying a batch in bulk it's very difficult to look at those pieces individually but if you are buying like 10 15 pieces it's very easy to spot these problems always carry a flash torch with you, with you because most of those joints which are uh, uh, stuck together with glue can be easily made out they will shine out when you flash a light or you can just use an instrument like this or even a pen to just uh, you know chisel out some of this dirt from this fine piece of agarwood now guys there are some special instances here some special types of wood that i need to talk about there's something called as heavy sinking wood which basically means that the wood is so heavy with resonation that it immediately sinks uh, in a bowl filled with water all right so it sinks to the bottom something like this now this is a beautiful piece you can see the golden fibers running through and through this is a beautiful piece of oud and it smells gorgeous even at room temperature i don't need to uh, put it on a burner or a heater it just smells so gorgeous it has that faint leathery smell of agar wood and uh, it's got uh, some nice uh fruity sour sweet and sour uh, berries uh, smell to it it's a very beautiful piece it's a very old piece gifted to me from a friend so they had uh, this piece in their family it's a very special type of food so these sort of woods are very rare to come by but you have to understand that these woods look very very similar to some of the new faked woods which are uh, polished or have this uh, false layer of coating of dark coating over the wood to fool you guys so smelling a wood is also a very important part of experiencing its smell now there are some smaller sinking nuggets which look like this now this is a beautiful sinking piece from borneo from the island of borneo 
and you can see the resonation goes across the wood it's not just on the sides which is usually seen with plantation wood the infection has already crossed the outer core and has entered the inside or the heart wood as we call it so this is also a sinking piece but it's a very small sinking nugget from the island of borneo now most of these smells will differ and according to the regions they'll have a special smell character of their own now this is a very fine piece of wood it may just look simple to you because it all it looks all white it doesn't have the brown resonation pattern which uh, it's usually found with uh, the woods or the chips that i have but this is a special vietnam yellow yellow soil incense grade wood so incense grade wood is again something which can give you a lot of smoke beautiful smelling incense smoke so that agar resin actually burns up fires up to give you one of the most beautiful smells and this may trick you so the only way to test these is to put a small uh, to put a small piece on the burner and experience the smell don't go by the buyer's word you have to smell this piece before you decide to you know buy it off now there's something called as kiara kiara uh, in japan and kinam in china and other regions so guys this is a special type of agar wood which is probably the most uh, valued or the most precious sort of oud that you can find in the world now most of these woods these special sort of woods are from a company known as agar aromas which basically belongs to one of the legends in the game his name is mr anthony bolton and i'll put down his email id below where you can ask him for samples you can buy off samples of woods he also distills some oils from these woods so he's a very nice gentleman very trusted name in the business and um, these are not the finest kiara pieces that i've encountered my finest kiara pieces came from kiara zen and kiara zen um, is a very respected incense making company they also sell woods they have also sold oils in the past oud oils in the past i'll mention their uh, website link below however be cautious guys their website whenever it uploads some new materials it's sold out within a few hours or within a few days that's their reputation in the market so guys this kiara wood is formed because of a special uh, reaction uh, most of these wood pieces are found buried underneath the ground so nobody is sure where these come from there's a hypothesis that these are found uh, only in vietnam a uh, vietnamese sub type of agar wood and chinese sub type of agar wood but many recent findings go you know tell you a different story so you just need to understand that the basics of this is that this sort of wood has a lot of resinous pattern it has a lot of resins basically the wood fibers have completely converted to something gummy something resinous something uh, of a thick waxy character that's what kiara is and it does not require an actual burning to be able to appreciate its smell it's used in mostly japanese and chinese incense houses it has a very beautiful uplifting smell a linear sharp brain numbing sort of smell and uh, that's why it is regarded as one of the most precious materials on this planet now guys here i have a bunch of the most beautiful oud pieces found in the indian market have a look at these pieces just just look at these pieces you can pause the video and look at these pieces this is how a moderate grade agar wood piece should look like this is not even the top grade and people say that india doesn't have good agar wood anymore but guys this is all old stock found with the most reputed sellers i'll put down the links to approach them this is from the brand agarwood assam very kind gentleman look at this piece it's so beautiful you can see these almost look like rocky mountains these look like mountains these pieces are my favorite pieces my favorite indian pieces and this this thin sheet will actually burn on the heater for almost 10 to 15 minutes giving you a beautiful smell it will it has the potential of filling up a whole room or uh, Uh, fumigating your clothes with uh, the beautiful resinous smell of agar wood, and the smell will 
keep on coming to you for a very very long period of time let's say 10 to 12 hours look at these pieces this the, this is how actually nice agar wood pieces should look like now i'll show you one more piece very interesting piece you can see this is very dark colored very nice on the outside but when you see inside is all white fiber so this is where the oud oil comes from and this is where the resin comes from so if you have a hard piece like this this will not be chosen to make an oud oil most of the oud oil comes from this whitish part and maybe a little bit of the chipping of these sort of resinous thick resinous wood pieces now that's something which nobody is going to tell you in the market So guys now let me take you through the burners that I use to burn agar wood and each one of these serves a different purpose all right these are different bur uh, burners for burning different sorts of agar woods in different styles in different manners so you can enjoy the finer aspects or the first one is uh, a voltage controlled incense burner which basically utilizes a power source so you need a power outlet with a voltage control system here so if you can see there are markings this is 120 150 160 180 degrees and i can control this with the help of a controller now this is required to burn high quality woods or top grade incense woods uh, this has a mica plate up here so mica is a very good conductor uh, you can say of heat and uh, it won't burn you it will never burn your hands and it will give you the perfect temperature to burn this and you will be provided with mica plates of mica sheets rather of this size so what you can do is place your mica plate up here there will be about 50 or 100 different uh, plates in here which you can reuse you can also wash these because the residue from the burning wood gets stuck on the uh, on these plates I'll show you that so what you can do is use hydrogen peroxide or just use soap and water to scrub those off and you can keep on using these mica plates these can be used for almost 10 20 times or even more than that if you use low temperatures now you can see a beautiful piece up here this was part of the brunei sample that i showed you now what i do is i usually start with the lowest temperature which is 12 here which is approximately 120 degrees now what it does is it passes the heat through the coil inside here which is basically copper and it provides low heat and most of the woods which contain a lot of resin or even uh, you know high amounts of oil these will benefit from uh, you know these sort of temperatures because it helps uh, the purpose of it basically is to heat the resin and not the wood fibers so you get a pure smell of oud and you can also use that for fumigation if you have high grade chips that I showed you uh, especially the Hindi chips from Zakir from Agarwood Assam you can use that uh, which almost burns for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes on this temperature so it gets absorbed well into your clothes and it can last for 9 to 10 hours so you don't need to wear an oud fragrance or an oud oil for that matter all right the next set is also very interesting we'll put this aside and we'll shift to the ceramic burner now this set is also a voltage controlled one you can see here it is this gives you a very nice voltage control it also has a display I got this from NSAR Ood I'll put down the links below for this as well I'll put down the email below where you can mail the person and order this so this is a proper ceramic burner the material is totally different it has a very smooth heating surface which is basically ceramic material all right it's porcelain and uh, there's a beautiful piece inside now what happens guys this provides a very soft temperature for precious woods like Kiara which are extremely expensive and require the gentlest heat the most gentle heat to heat up the resin inside you don't need to burn the wood fibers you will completely waste that I mean one gram of Kiara is extremely expensive so you need to preserve that so what it does is provides a very this provides a very uh, soft heat a gentle heat for a prolonged period of time so you get pure whiffs of Chiara now the purpose of this is to enjoy the smell of Chiara in your room to fill the smell uh, of Chiara to fill your room with the smell of Chiara etc and you don't need to uh, you know worry about fumigating your clothes etc you just need to uh, have a beautiful smelling um, 
experience it's like a spiritual experience you it's like burning incense but instead of practicing something as gentle as the monko uh, you know session or your typical kodo sessions from japan where they put these mica plates over uh, some rice powder and at the bottom they place uh, a small piece of charcoal which provides the most gentle heat to uh, heat up smaller pieces smaller sliver i mean the smallest slivers of uh, agar wood or kyara so that's a very tedious process you just need a ceramic heater like this to give you the same experience without going through the hassle of preparing the whole traditional kodo system now the third or the simplest one is charcoal now this charcoal is what you get uh, generally in the market uh, for shisha or hookah now there are some other charcoals which are made of coconut husk uh, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them on eBay, you can also get them at the shisha stores. This has a lot of charcoal content, alright, but the coconut husk charcoal uh, does not have those harsh uh, smelling chemicals in them. So what you have to do is put these on a traditional burner or a mubakra, wait for these to burn almost for 20 minutes or 15 minutes, let the whole coal get covered by uh, ash by by a thick layer of ash and uh, what it does it gives a gentle heat to your woods that's the purpose guys that's the aim to heat the resin and not the wood pieces if you put the most beautiful piece of agar wood on a burning charcoal don't expect it to burn and give you pleasure because you get the smell of wood which is anomal which is anomalous you don't want that you just need the smell of the resin that is the actual agar incense so what people in the arab world do i mean the general people they place a lot of these beautiful thick sinking pieces over a huge a burning mubakra there are a lot of coals inside it's very uh, hot and they but they place it so it's nice for a mehfil or uh, you know an arrangement where you have a lot of people and you just need to pass around the burner for that purpose that's perfect and even to fumigate your clothes you need something like this you just need uh, the traditional burner you place the coal and you just place the piece of wood and hang your shirt or your clothes or your robe your shawl whatever you want to fumigate uh, uh, it with you know the, the agar smoke just place it on a cloth hanger or simply hold it with your hand and place this thing at the bottom it, the smoke will come up get absorbed in your clothes you need high heat you need uh, a proper burning to get that fumigation effect from your clothes but for personal use this is the ideal burner and this for even the most um, uh, sophisticated noses the most sophisticated noses who only are looking to test the quality of the material or to understand the whole olfactory spectrum of the wood this is a perfect burner then this this is for oud minimalists this is for people who love to smell loud who love to uh, you know show off the beautiful smell of agar wood there's nothing wrong in it it smells absolutely heavenly so th these are some of the most important apparatuses that you can have <laughs>